I love it up here. We, I, I have a place up here now. We're up you here do? a lot. Yeah, I'm up here. I've had a place about a year, and I'm up here almost as much as I am in Nashville. Do you need someone to watch it. it while you're in Nashville? I do. Oh, would you please? I would do that for you, Steve Warner, just for free. It's so fun. I love it here. We love it. We love it. I've, I got my little app that I was looking yesterday. I think I walked about five miles yesterday. I think I don't walk that much in Nashville in about two weeks, you know, but it's really fun. We love it here. What's your favorite thing to do here? What do you have to do when you come here? I have to go to the donut plant, which is down in Lower East Side. It's a place where they what? make the best donuts in the world. The girls are nodding. I had not heard of that. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you I know. have to go there. I mean, it's it's when I walk by there, I just it's like my feet just kind of go. Oh, <laughs> I want to. It's great. It's I, it always goes to food. You ever know that yeah. with me? It always goes. To, but I no, I love it here. I love the museums too. I love. I, you know, I draw and paint and. I paint a little bit for hobby, for fun. I'm actually, I'm having an art show in Nashville in October, and I love going to the museums here and watch, look at the real You're such art. Such the Renaissance man. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a. I'm a dabbler. I'll put it that way. But I am having a show October 10th. I think it opens at yeah, the Tennessee State Museum. It. I'm going to have 20 pieces of art. It's a show. My really first show I've ever done. Will so. you let us know? I we'll promise you, I will. And, oh, I promise. Yeah. Get, yeah. That'd and it's going to be about three months. It's going to be. I'm doing 20 pieces, so it's now, fun. What a solid, nice man you are. Aww, and, right? And what thank a, you for that. And you've had just this marathon of a career <laughs> that has been sustained. And I guess I didn't realize you started so young. I mean, did you get into trouble when you were young? You've, ne you've never been in any trouble. What's the worst you know thing what? you've done, Steve you Warner? You know what? My mom told me once. She, I don't even remember <laughs> this, but I'll, I'll get back to that. Okay. But my mom told me once. She said, I could like the never got you to go to school she said you just i don't really recall this but she said i would come home from of course this is you know walking we walked to school both ways with no shoes <laughs> and uphill both ways and all that of course my kids always go oh man you know here we go again but i would walk home from school and my mom said we'd have like an hour lunch break and i would walk and go straight i didn't eat that bologna sandwich just stayed, you know, there's that bologna sandwich again. But it would stay there, and I'd go straight and practice guitar. And I would, she would go, here's your here's your sandwich. And on the way, I'd eat it on the way back to school. I just, that's all I wanted to do was play guitar all the time. And so I don't think I got in trouble so much. But uh, I do remember one time, and I'm going to tell you, one time I really okay. got in trouble. All right, okay. This is the worst I can remember. My dad... I got in my my dad's sock drawer one time, and there was a bunch of money in there, like a whole bunch of change. Mm -hmm. And I it was like 5 $6 or whatever in change. And this was like when I was in fifth grade or whatever. And I remember I went straight to our little G.C. Murphy store and bought a whole bunch of whatever, junk, you know, mm -hmm. candy, whatever. And then the next morning, here's the conversation I heard while I was getting ready for school. I heard my dad tell my mom, Eileen... What happened to that money that was in the bottom of that door? That's Kenny. That's so my oldest brother. That's his lunch money, and that's his bottom. And I was like, uh oh. So I got in big trouble on that one. So that's one of them that I. But I never got in no. big, big I was trouble. I was thinking you know, more of debauchery out yeah, with I mean, Chet and the fellas. I can't talk about that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. There was once in Frankfurt, Germany, when I got off, or excuse me. Hamburg, Germany. I got off the plane with Chet Atkins bunch. Now you'd think Chet, the mild mannered, you know, cool, laid back mm -hmm. icon, legendary guy he was. I'm get killed if he if he knew I was telling this. <laughs> but we got off the plane and I remember real calmly. Chet says we should go to the Reeperbahn area of Hamburg, and I was like, I'm like 19 years old. I go, what is that? You know, <laughs> I found out soon that it was the area that's worth the red lights and oh, all that. You know, right. so I'm like, wow, that's. I'm getting really educated on no. the road here. And now so. the, the bag of coins don't seem so bad. The bag so. of coins is not much. But I was, <laughs> when I got the whipping from my dad, it felt like a lot. So. Well, it's been so awesome to talk to you. Oh, I'm excited well, thank you very much. to have you in town for the Songwriter Series tomorrow night and Wednesday night. Tomorrow night, Wednesday night at Joe's Pub. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, Bob DePiro hosts that. He does a great job. There's some wonderful writers that are going to be there and it's so much we, i was on it about a year and a half ago and it was so much fun man for people it's, who've never been to one of these events what can they expect well i think you can expect a lot of stories stories behind the songs and uh, you never know what to expect uh you know the what i love are the jokes and the stories and the interplay between mm -hmm. the r different writers and uh, 
a lot of fun. That that venue is really nice too. It sounds real good in there. It's all very intimate and close up. There's no bad mm-hmm. seats that I can know of. It's really cool. I'm, and there are still a few tickets left. I believe so. There's we're doing four shows: two Wednesday or two Tuesday, two Wednesday, six thirty, and I don't know the last show, but nine I think. But yeah, there's a. It, it's like a few, but it's going pretty good. So for uh, going back all those years to when you were playing the guitar all day instead of studying that's where i got in trouble right there uh for that little kid who's you know listening to you as an inspiration what's your your best piece of advice for aspiring there's no question the first thing i always say when young guitar players or singers artists come up my thing is stay in school and get educated because i i left i left my senior year i met Dottie west by Right before my break of my senior year, I did. I graduated high school. I mean, I did graduate. I had a half credit of government mandatory second, uh, my second semester that I got traveling on the road. But uh, I always tell kids to, you know, stay in school, go to college, and get the education. Don't do like I did. I did graduate, but I didn't. My college was being on the road with Dottie West, but wouldn't trade it for anything. But but um, I would always say do that first. But, but you know, just never take – Chet Atkins told me once, he goes, take no, don't take no for an answer. He goes, mm-hmm. just if that's what – if you want it badly enough, you'll get it. And, and it's – the overnight success, it, an overnight is different for different people. Mm-hmm. So my overnight was longer than other folks. But, uh, but you know, it just – don't, don't, you know, don't take no and just don't give up on it. You know, it'll happen for you if it's meant to be, so – 